guys, you're going to notice my garage is opened up and I have a window and I have my ventilation running through it. I actually have a little 2x4 behind there to hold it. I'm going to upgrade this at some future time, but right now it works enough to get the air pushed out. I've got my 11 by 8 30 percent translucent plexiglass that I'm just going to put down and I've already discussed in my last video how to set up your laser printer and how I have mine you'll notice mine's fairly loose I can move it around that's all right but I'm just going to pull that up like that I'm gonna, I've already cleaned my laser. I went ahead and used the alcohol to clean it. So I always do that before I ever cut. And then this is gonna be the air that pumps in. I, I never work on my laser unless the laser is turned off. So now that that's turned on, I'm just gonna run over here real quick and I'm gonna hit my power button and that's gonna turn everything on. So now I've got my pump running. I can see the water running through the laser. I can now see the temperature of my laser, my voltage. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this all the way up, okay? And then this orange glass here is to protect you from the laser, in case you were wondering. And you can see the laser set up right inside there, okay? And I have a little laser pointer on there, and that just is wired into that. Not a big deal. Okay, on the software, I have the uh, I have my panel pulled up here, and I have the option to move it right here, and I can set this to like 30, and then I'll do like minus 50, and you can play around with this. But when I hit move, it's going to adjust that on the screen, and what you're going to notice is once my USB is plugged into here, I can click this initialize cutter. Now watch what happens when I push it. You see that the, the it moved. And you'll notice when I initialized it, it reset it. But I'm gonna go ahead and move it now to here and watch what happens. See that? So that correlates with what's on this screen here. So you saw, you saw how that dot there moved to that position. That dot represents the laser right there, where it's at. And I'll just turn on a pointer. But that's how you move it around is in this area here. And you get a spot where you're comfortable. This one, since I'm showing you guys, I just have one sheet in here. But traditionally, I might have one panel, two panel, three panel or even four panels all on one sheet. But uh, you're gonna notice the colors here, they are red and black, and that corresponds with the vector cut and also the raster engraving, okay? Now, I keep this at 10, and that's gonna be the how many millimeters per second that it's running, and I leave this one. Sometimes I might bump this up to about 140, depending on it. But then I come over here to tools. Let me go to settings, actually. I go to advanced settings. And I'm gonna say right here, I'm gonna change this to three cuts. So what the laser is gonna do is it's gonna follow that red line three different times and cut it. Now what you're gonna notice in that red line is you see these little corners here. Well, that's gonna cut out around those corners. And it's also gonna cut on the outside you may or may not uh, design your panel to do that, but it, it just, uh, because I'm already cutting the outside on this, it really doesn't matter. Um, and I'm cutting it out this, and then these bigger areas are gonna all be cut out. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about engraving until I paint it, and I'll show you how I do that. But let's go ahead, and I'm gonna start it. And to start it, I click on this vector cut here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna start the process of the laser and you're gonna see it cutting. And I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's see if, you might be able to see a flash of a laser from time to time. I'm gonna do the cardinal sin and I'm gonna open it up and just show it to you. See 
that cutting. Okay, that's enough now. See my nice LED fell over. <laughs> and I'm gonna pause this now and we're gonna come back after it's cut out and I'm gonna show you the finished product. And then we're gonna go on to painting it. And then we're gonna come back to engraving it. One point I wanna make is ventilation. Just make sure that you're well ventilated when you do this. And I usually try to keep a garage door completely open. Also, make sure you have a fire extinguisher nearby and never leave your laser unattended. Okay, I wanna show you this, if you can see it. Let me just bump this open again, you'll see. The laser doing its cutting. Okay, the laser cutting is done. I'm gonna go ahead and just take my magnets and stack them back up. Move out the plexiglass. I'll just I'll set that there for now. And then I'm just going to lift this up very carefully. And you have yourself your panel. Now you noticed I, uh, just to reiterate, I left this at a 10. I ran it at full voltage and I made three passes and that was what was needed to cut it. Now again, this is gonna be trial and error on your part. You might find, find it cuts better one way or another or at a different temperature, but that's what it does on my cutter. And I'm gonna show you now how I prep this. Okay, so this is a sanding block. You can get these at any hardware store or paint supplier. And you'll notice it says 1,000 on this side and 1500 on this side. Well, the 1000 is what we start with, and then we finish with the 1500. And I wet sand it, and I basically sand down all the corners, just basically rough it up a little bit. And even though it may look polished and nice, it is actually roughing it up for the paint. And then I finish it off with the 1500 on this side. And I sand it really good, and I just get all the sharp edges off and, and make it nice and smooth, and then Rinse it off, I dry it real good at that point in time. Now once I am done with that, this is the magic right here. You want to go to Walmart or a paint supply store and buy some of this cloth that you want to wipe down that panel with. And it's, uh, it's actually extremely sticky feeling. And uh, you'll notice it, it just really sticky like it'll stick to you and that's what's going to take off any debris or dust that's going to mess up your paint that's uh that's one of the little secrets there so let me go ahead and sand this and dry it and then we'll go ahead and take it to the next step okay guys so this is my professional paint booth it's high tech and you're probably going to have a hard time replicating it because it uses some pretty awesome technology but what I have here is I have my panel it has been sanded and with a thousand then 1500 and then I have aggressively wiped it down with my cloth there and I'm not just gonna set this on here yet what I've learned is uh, I always like to shake these for a good 30 30 to 60 seconds pretty pretty good and then what I like to do is I like to actually spray the area down before I put the panel on. And I know this, you can probably guess why I do this, but it allows, it allows it to get all the little dust particles that are floating there to settle down. Now what I'm gonna spray first on this is what's called a plastic adhesion promoter. Okay, and then once I'm done spraying that, I'm just going to do the Rust-Oleum gray paint. Again, shake these things up super good. That's always the biggest problem you have when it comes to the paint. So I'm just going to set this down there. Okay, you'll see how it's it's done up like that. I'm going to take a, and this just needs a light coat of this, not much. 
just like that. That's just going to allow, allow that paint to really stick to this. You can almost see it puts like almost like a matte finish on it. Okay. I know a lot of you guys that are professional painters out there thinking I'm uh, butchering all this, but boy, they come out nice when I'm done. So, <laughs> hey, if you like, if you're like me and you just like to work with what you have, um, then, then give me a thumbs up right now on this video. I'm just going to go ahead and do a couple of sprays, make sure my paint is good. Just give that a few seconds to set in, and then I'm just going to coat it. And I'm just going to put a really light dust on it. Not a lot, just like that. See that there? I'm going to let that dry, and then I'll come back. And I'll put another coat, but my second coat's going to be a little bit heavier and thicker just to give it that nice wet look and to let that paint lay down. So let me pause and I'll come back to it.